Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be here. Uh, let me find my presentation. While he's finding the presentation, let me say that uh, I made this presentation for 45 minutes, <laughs> but I only have 15 minutes. And I made it for all of the partner countries in Innogate. Uh, but uh, today I'm just addressing Azerbaijan. Therefore, I will, uh, I've already eliminated some of the slides and I will only focus on the slides that are most important for Azerbaijan, if we can ever find the presentation. I am the key expert for sustainable energy in the Innogate new ITS project. Uh, today, people have been asking me questions about gas. I'm not really qualified to answer questions about gas or electricity. That's another component, and uh, we have other experts doing that. Today, we'll talk about the um, OECD plan to stabilize the climate. Um, often, people ask, how should we determine our investment goals on a national basis? So. Uh, in response to that, I said, well, let's pick a, a goal that achieves a meaningful objective. What would that be? Well, that would be to avoid the tipping point in global warming. Avoid the points where if you go beyond them, you cannot come back. And the global warming may continue uh, on its own out of control. So let's, let's look at that and then work backwards and calculate the investments necessary to avoid the tipping points. Now, um, energy security is not Azerbaijan's problem, so we will skip that and just focus on economic reasons and climate reasons. Okay. Here's a picture of the, uh, the carbon dioxide accumulation or emissions in the uh, atmosphere and you see, for centuries and centuries, we were moving along at about 280 uh, parts per million in the atmosphere. And then suddenly, right there, about 1830 or 1840, it started to jump up. What happened then? That was the Industrial Revolution. Ever since then, we've been going up and up and up and never coming down. They call this the hockey stick graph because it looks like a hockey stick sitting on its side. Today we're at uh, 440 parts per million for all greenhouse gases. And the increase is about two per year. OECD predicts that uh, by 2030, we may cross the tipping point. We may, our temperature may increase more than two degrees uh, that's allowed to be secure. That's business as usual. After we get beyond 450 parts per million, there's a large possibility that the temperature will increase, the oceans will begin releasing more carbon dioxide than they, than they absorb, and the temperature will continue to rise out of control. Now, from the IEA data, the whole world burns about 10 billion tons of oil equivalent of fossil fuel per year. This produces about 48 and a half gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year. The annual increase is about 700 megatons, and that's about one and a half percent per year. Remember that number, 700 megatons. The three biggest emitting sectors are electricity, generation, industry, and transport. Here are the uh, annual numbers calculated from IEA data for the whole world, for the European Union, which I rep represent, and for Azerbaijan. The carbon emissions from here are about 55 megatons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year. I'll skip this slide because energy security is not your problem. You have all the energy you need, you export energy. So let's go right on to the OECD plan. OECD says to avoid this tipping point, right, right there, at 2030, we have to take urgent action 
and continue taking this action until the end of the century. We cannot avoid it in a day or even a year. It's going to take us many, many years of hard work. You see that in the end, at the end of the century, we're almost down to carbon neutrality. Let's look at the same data a different way. OECD proposes a four-stage plan to get from here to there. In the first 10 years, they say, don't reduce anything, just stop increasing. That makes sense. So in this decade, which you, we're already two or three years into it, but by 2020, they would like to see a, 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 a no more increase, let's say. It just levels at uh, 48 and a half thousand per year. In the next 10 years, we should begin to decrease slowly at uh, 45,000 per year. Then for the next 20 years, 31 and a half thousand megatons, and for the last half century, 8,000 megatons per year. This is very drastic. This is a huge, huge challenge for the whole world, and every country is in this mess together. There's no one country you can say, it's not my fault, it's his fault, it's her fault. I hear this all the time, but really, every country has to do its part to get from here to there to avoid the tipping points. Now, since I'm the uh, key expert for sustainable energy, my solution is to replace the fossil fuel with sustainable energy, which means energy efficiency or renewable energy sources. Now, this is not to put the fossil fuel people out of business. We are friends. We're in the same room together. But what I'm advocating is a transition of the business from fossil fuel to renewable energy. The same companies can do this work. Shell Oil, for, for example, is already starting transition. To follow the OECD plan, we can and we must change behavior, and we can and we must invest in technology. We'll discuss both of them, and I would like to present a methodology to achieve the um, investment target, because nobody knows how much do we have to spend. I don't have the answer here, how much we have to spend. I have a methodology where you can figure it out yourself with your own local data and considering your own local needs. What does the technology cost? Well, that depends on many things and the prices vary a lot. You can have very expensive and very inexpensive technologies. Um, but let's just look at the big picture here. Energy efficiency technology, on average, costs about two and a half euro cents per kilowatt hour levelized, considering the economic life of the project and the discount rate and the cost of the technology, everything. And that can be translated to about 60 euros per, that should be megaton of carbon dioxide equivalent. Okay. Um, renewable energy costs about 200 euros, uh, more than three times as much, on average. There are more expensive and less expensive. We'll discuss more of this later. And these technologies cover every sector, energy, buildings, industry, and transportation. Let's go through an example, making some assumptions. Remember, the world needs to avoid an increase of 700 megatons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year in order just to stop the increase. Just to stop the increase, no decrease. And let's try the method and make an assumption that we want to invest in one third of, uh, of, of our target should be energy efficiency and two thirds should be renewable energy sources. You may change this, of course. You may reverse it or fix it any way that is necessary for your country. So in the case of 700, that breaks down to 233 for efficiency and 467 for renewables. 
Here are these numbers again, 233, 467. Here are the unit costs that we talked about before, and there is the annual investment necessary. For the whole world, it's just over 100 billion euros per year. And you have to do that every year. Now, 100 billion euros sounds like a lot, but consider that every year the world spends 13 trillion euros per year just to sustain its infrastructure. So 107 billion is a small part of that to upgrade the infrastructure to become sustainable. Most of these upgrades will pay for themselves. You'll get the money back with profit in most cases. Local solutions. Azerbaijan. Okay, what is the rate of increase? It's not, it's not one and a half percent for every country, and I'm not, I'm not sure what it is for Azerbaijan because the latest IEA data is not out yet since the crisis. So let's go with the GDP increase. All right, GDP increase at uh, 3.7 percent. If that is, if that corresponds to the emissions increase, then Azerbaijan, going through the same calculation, would spend about 35 billion per year. Excuse me, that should be, that should be 35 million, if I'm not mistaken. I will correct this before I turn in the slide. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean to scare you. It's 35 million. All right. The, uh, it's, it's my, the point is that it's much less than the annual. Okay. Now, I'm going so fast, I'm getting confused. That previous number is for the European Union. This number is for Azerbaijan. Here we go. A half a billion. The cost of business as usual is about 8 billion. A half a billion is a small part of that. Now, how, how about the return on the investment? Let's talk about that. I'm going to give the example of your neighbor next door, Georgia. They've made a policy decision to exploit all possible hydroelectric power. That's renewable. And that gives them a return on the investment of 13%, internal rate of return of 10%. If those numbers are good, then better numbers are more favorable. Well, what's more favorable than small hydropower? Look to the right, and you'll see less expensive energy efficiency. All right, let's continue the example. Um, Moldova has a policy to invest in biomass. So if they consider biomass an acceptable investment, everything to the right should be more acceptable. There is a great tendency in Azerbaijan to invest in wind power. If that's a good investment, then everything to the right of wind power is less expensive and probably a better investment. You have to repeat this every year, and remember the money does not all have to come from the national budget. It can come from private investments, private companies, domestic, foreign, any place you can find it. This is obvious. Everybody has their advantages and disadvantages, and you have to consider your own conditions. Security is not for you, but your problem is to maximize your income, maximize your profit, and every kilowatt hour that's not wasted at home is a kilowatt hour you can export for cash. Behavior. You know, if you're driving down the road and you take your foot off the gas pedal, the car stops pretty quickly. And that's how it is with behavior changes. They are driven by management, by leadership, and as soon as management falls asleep, um, everybody else just goes back to their old way of behavior. So uh, changing behavior is good. It's the cheapest way you can save energy. But here is the challenge. You can change it through policy and education in many ways, but the challenge is to keep it continuous. Okay. In summary, investments can reduce energy intensity, increase productivity, reduce global warming, create jobs, and most of the investments return more than they cost. Thank you.